With summer finally coming to a close and school starting back up in the fall, the nights in astrotography are finally starting to get a bit longer, which means we can take more pictures during the night and we can come out with more data. But you may be wondering, <laughs> if I'm talking about astrotography, then why am I standing in the shade on a bright summer day? Hi everyone, my name is Noah and welcome back to the channel. So today I'm doing something a little bit different. I haven't done this before, but I'm actually going to be photographing some sunspots on the sun and I thought I'd bring you along for the ride. Before I start this video, I just want to make it clear that all the things I do in this video are with specialized solar filters and looking through a telescope at the sun is never a good idea and without the proper equipment you can be permanently blinded or you can destroy your camera. Today's video is by no means going to be a long one. What I wanted to do today is just dip my feet into solar photography a little bit and I wanted to show you guys a little bit about solar photography and the other side of astrophotography you don't normally think about, which is astrophotography during the day. when I'm back outside. If my face looks a little red to you, that's because I'm under the umbrella. It's really hot outside, so sitting in the shade is definitely going to help in the broad daylight. The summer so far in Minnesota has just been absolutely brutal. The average highs during June and July have just been in the 90s, which is really hot. That's about, what is that in Celsius? 90 degrees Fahrenheit to Celsius. That's about 32 degrees Celsius, which is Definitely not cold. <laughs> anyway, the summers are finally coming to a close and the temperatures are finally starting to get a bit cooler, which is always nice. Hi everyone, just future Noah quickly interrupting the video. So I was editing today's video and I realized I left out something pretty important when it comes to solar photography, and that is the different types of solar photography. So there are really two types of solar photography. There is white light solar photography and narrow band solar photography. Both are about pointing a telescope to the sun and capturing sunspots, but the difference is, is what you're actually capturing on the sun. So white light solar photography is the simplest and easiest solar photography method to do. It's easy because all you really need is a solar filter and a telescope, and you can point your telescope at the sun and capture sunspots. Basically with white light solar photography, you're capturing all the light coming from the sun and you're not isolating any different channels of the sun. Narrowband solar photography is all about capturing specific wavelengths of the sun. So instead of white light solar photography, when we're capturing all different spectrum of the sun, in narrowband solar photography, we're just capturing specific band passes. This is a far harder and more advanced technique of solar imaging, so I'm not going to cover it much in this video, but you can do much more with narrowband solar photography, and you can capture different parts of the sun, like solar prominences and the chronosphere of the sun. The method of solar photography I'll be mentioning in the rest of this video is white light solar photography, so the first method, with just a simple solar filter and a camera capturing all the light. Just wanted to make that clear for you guys. So right now I'm currently photographing an area of sunspots on the sun with my Celestron 130 SLT with a solar filter on it, and I have wired everything to my laptop here so I don't have to sit out in the sun. But you may be wondering, well, how do I actually know when there's sunspots on the sun? And because the sun's always ever-changing, there isn't always sunspots in the sun. And some days there are lots of sunspots, and some days there are zero sunspots. And if you're ever wondering when there's sunspots in the sun, I really recommend this website by NASA. I'll put a link in the description, but it shows the full disk of the sun with all the sunspots, and it even labels them as active regions so you can reference them later. And it's just a really good tool to make sure you don't go out photographing the sun for no reason. 
Hi everyone, I'm back inside and I just wanted to give some safety advice for photographing the sun. So the sun is obviously extremely bright and photographing the sun or looking at the sun through a telescope without a proper filter is extremely dangerous. You can instantly become blinded and ruin your telescope and camera equipment. To make sure you photograph the sun properly and safely, there are tons of filters out there for solar imaging and viewing. All the filter really is, is it's just uh, the cap that goes on the telescope and there's usually a little cutout with a solar film there and these are really good to use with telescopes. Celestron has a few which they sell for the different models of telescopes but just make the, sure the filter goes with the type of telescope you're using. One important thing to keep in mind is to make sure the solar film you're using is actually safe. So one tip to actually um, determine for yourself is on your solar filter box there's usually a label and on this label what you want to look for is three words that say ISO and make sure that your solar filter you're using is ISO rated to the latest standards for the best viewing. This will ensure your filter is safe for viewing and imaging and you won't have any issues. Another thing to keep in mind is when you're out in the field with your solar telescope is to remove all finder scopes and guide scopes from the telescope that way when you're slewing to the sun, those extra optics won't focus light and possibly start a fire. And just another point of advice is to make sure your filter is secured to your telescope nicely. Some filters actually come with some Velcro straps, which help you secure the filter better to the telescope. Anyways, guys, I think I'm gonna end the video around here. I wasn't able to show you as much as I can, but I really hope I was able to inspire you or just show you the world of solar photography. I really hope you like my final image at the end of the video. And until next time, stay safe, safe viewing, and as always, clear skies.